Is there an association between epicardia adipose tissue and uh, microbioma? Yeah, this is a fascinating story because this is microbioma coming from the guts. Uh, and we don't know how it reaches there, the epicardial fats, uh, but it is interesting that the microbiome in a acute patients is different compared to stable patients. This means that it might play a role in the activation of the unstable plaque. And uh, currently CT angiography is still uh, useful or not? <laughs> well, definitely it's very trendy and also very expensive. Uh, there is good evidence that in patients with suspected stable angina doesn't improve the outcome, a strategy guided by CTA. And uh, this more recent study shows that also in the setting of acute coronary syndrome, in patients with suspected ACS, a strategy guided by uh, coronary angiography, by non-invasive coronary angiography, doesn't pay off. And cardiovascular disease and comorbidities and other conditions like uh, elderly, diabetes, uh, arthritis, uh, what is the situation? Well, the situation uh, with regard to elderly patients uh, is become, becoming more and more clear. And data show that also in the very elderly, uh, an invasive approach in the setting of an acute coronary syndrome improves the outcome, also in very, very old patients. Uh, so I think that the, uh, uh, with the aging population we are facing, we shouldn't renounce to the invasive approach, at least in the setting of acute coronary syndrome. With regard to rheumatoid, arth rheumatoid arthritis, this is an interesting subset of patients. We know that in these patients, by definition, the inflammatory background is very active. And these are high-risk patients, like, like diabetic patients, but while we acknowledge, we are aware that diabetic patients are high-risk patients, we don't have necessarily the same feeling for patients with arthritis. And we should be more and more aware that this is a very high-risk population which needs a close follow-up.